as I understand it, it's a collection of about 2,000 letters, of which about 600 have never been opened. They date from around the mid 16th to early 17th century. And they've never been delivered. So they're this wonderful treasure trove of material of interest to historians that just doesn't exist anywhere else. We had a very particular challenge, which is we're working with a very rare, I mean, a unique historical collection. I met the Brienne team about four and a half, five years ago. Um, my main input to the project is actually imaging some of the letters and scanning them. So we have the system which is behind me. It was, it was very hard to know what to expect with this project. Uh, this is something that hasn't been done before, certainly not in this way. Um, and so. What we knew was that Graham and David had had experience scanning historical documents and that it's possible to see trace elements of some of the ink inside um, closed documents. And so working with them, we had these very exciting moments where it became clear that some of the ink was detectable in their X-ray scanning machines. I think it's the whole idea of being able to uncover something that, that's hidden, that people haven't been able to see, especially without doing any damage to it. That's the golden rule in conservation is don't do anything that can't be undone. Thanks for coming along today. I'm going to be talking about some work we're doing at Queen Mary with the 17th century letters. So this is some imaging that we've been doing over in the dental school, which is an unusual place to be doing historical and heritage research. The interest in this type of work started from a chance meeting at a conference in 2006, something like that, I think, when I was asked if the scanner that I'd developed really for dental use might be sensitive enough to detect the ink on parchment. And I was given a small sample to, as a feasibility test. And based on that, we got 1.2 million pounds worth of funding uh, to develop the technology. The technique is microtomography, so it works by taking X-ray images of the object, uh, but you take a series of images with the object rotated slightly. What does this really mean? If you really want to use X-rays to look inside something, uh, you need substrate to be something that doesn't show up too strongly, so it needs to be paper or parchment or wood bark. It works on X-ray transmission, a bit like a medical CT scanner just a smaller version, and rather than rotating all the x-ray around the patient, which is what happens in those, we just turn the sample around. And we take x-ray images around 360 degrees. Then a computer assembles those into a complete 3D volume. So the first time we got the real letters, there were the wax seals on there, which at the time we didn't know had lead in. So we put them in without thinking of the positioning of the seals to scan them. We took the first image just to get all the alignment and everything, the setup was necessary for um, the scans. And we noticed the only thing that was visible was just this big black blob in the middle of the screen. We knew this was going to cause a problem, that you're just not going to get x-rays through this. Um, so the one thing we managed to do, we rejigged some of the letters just to get the wax seals to all line up. So if we're gonna miss data, we want it in the same position on all of the letters rather than miss data in various sections of the letter. We said very confidently um, that we were going to x-ray some letters and try and read them without opening their seals. Well, um, this is a very difficult thing that's never been done before. So we're continuing to work and do research with uh, David Mills and Graham Davis into the possibilities uh, of working out how to do this. Nevertheless, we still have a lot of very complicated problems still to solve, how to access that kind of information, um, but also things that um, come up just through the scanning process. And so there have been some interesting challenges thrown up. So do we know how many of the letters have in seals on it, the ones with the, the lead? We're not sure exactly of the proportion. Um, it's not 100% because lots of them have checked that just um, 
paper seals. So they're just wheat starch paste. Those are the nice easy ones to scan. So can we bring a whole bunch of them over and yeah, scan for can that can they get them x-rayed somewhere? I don't off? think we've got any potential to get them imaged there. Yeah. We've got I think they're, they're able to bring about 20, 25 at the time. The first batch we had, they brought about 20, we picked the best 10. Right, so we're just for a single projection and yeah, yeah. see which ones are doable. Okay. Okay. I think when you do something like this, you're not sure how successful it's going to be. We do, you don't promise that you're going to deliver a result. It's not like you're being paid X thousand pounds uh, to deliver a result. It's at the feasibility stage. Can we do this? Um, and we're always pushing the limits between sort of what's possible, what's impossible. We're trying to move that boundary all the time. And we have a catchphrase, they don't pay us to do the easy stuff. When you're looking for really pushing things to the limits, um, that really gets your enthusiasm going. You get the challenge of doing something new.